Hi, I'm four-time world champion Sarah wrestler Tyler Wagespeck, and Rodeo Rap starts right now. There's a look at Cole Reiner on top of Control Freak in the bareback competition. He is looking for the sweep. Hi, everyone, and welcome into Rodeo Wrap. It is the championship night. Yes, night three of Super Series 2. Everyone's looking to advance. Will Cole Reiner advance? Will he get the sweep? Let's go right to the guys who called all the action, Boy Paul Hamas and Bob Tallman. Yeah, thanks, Patty. That's the question that everybody was wondering. Would Cole Reiner sweep? We're going to get to that here in a second. But, Bobby T., what would you think of Super Series 2? Well, after Super Series number one with all the world champions that we had, I looked at Super Series 2 and go, where are we going to go with this deal? Will we bring some new names to the forefront? We did bring a lot of new names, spread a lot of money around, too. You bet we did. So let's find out who got that money and who those new names are. Let's begin in uh, the bareback bronc riding highlights. This is Cole Reiner. Guess what? He didn't sweep. He was a point and a half shy of doing it. This was a beautiful ride, though. 86 and a half points on the freshman 15. Way to go, Cole. Well, the guy that just uh, won San Antone draws the bucking horse of the year, the world champion womanizer. This is Leighton Berry. What did he do? A point and a half to Boyd mentioned. 88 goes to the top. Cole Reiner second, then Tudor, then Cole Franks. But what matters is the money. Who are the four guys that won the most? Cole Reiner got the guitar with 7,500 in earnings. Barry, the number two money winner. Franks and Bourgeois sneaks into the number four spot. They're moving on to a semifinal. Now to the Classic of the Bronx. Let's go to Montana, and he's been consistent. I mean, he finished second in the first night, third the second night. Here he is second again. Chase Brooks, Mr. Montana, 84 points. Well, the guy that's going to be 87 and a half is a Canadian from British Columbia. This is Ben Anderson. I thought we we're going to kill him the first night and break his leg. He comes back, wins 3,000. Then there's your Chase Brooks, Wyatt Casper, and Tanner Butner. Yeah, and now the advancing uh, Cowboys that are moving on to a semifinal. Wyoming's Butner, Montana's Chase Brooks, Canada's Ben Anderson, and the youngest Wright brother, Statler, will be in a semifinal. Now to the bull riding. Our first sweep of the entire rodeo. He won all three rounds. Kai Hamilton, the Australian, or as Bobby T likes to say, Aussie, 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 86 points for long, tall Kai. There it is. That's, a, that's all the graphics you need, folks. And look at this number, $9,000 by sweeping. Hutchins, second, Young, second and third. And then Sticky Cleaves is going to advance on total time one. You know, I'm just going to say this. When Ben Anderson was in that bucket shoot with that horse trying to get out. Yes. I mean, we, we do a lot of communicating, trying to tell people what they're going through. But that time right in there, he showed a lot of folks what kind of issues you can have in the bucket shoots with a bucking horse underneath you. Well, and he's had a couple of bad experiences in round one and round two. In round one, a horse mashed his leg like to tore his ankle off. So that's got to be working on his mind, and he's sore. But he was trying to do the right thing but couldn't do it. The horse didn't want to cooperate. Patience. Yep, patience pays off even in the timed events. Let's go to those contests and find out who is patient enough to advance to a semifinal. In the tie down roping, finally, Joel Harris, who has hit the ground a couple of times here, bounces up on this one 10 and 3. Well, the new heartthrob from East Texas, this is Kincaid Henry. He's been a rookie, now he's a veteran with a 9 6 from Mount Pleasant. That's the way it all came down. Now, Henry will win the round, Harris, Thiessen, and Youngblood, but the advancers cooking. Sterling Smith with 5,000, Shazawa, Youngblood, and Henry all moving on to a semifinal. To the team rope when we go. These guys can rope. I'm telling you they can rope. They cannot play a guitar to save their lives. <laughs> They're going to win it. This is Dawson and Dylan Graves, and we gave them the guitars tonight. They look like... People with two left feet. Anyway, there it is. Five flat for the win. Masters, James Hall. But here's the money, Bob. All right. Big money. That's Dylan and Dawson. 14,000 U.S. funds for the Canadians. Bray and Hall get 13,500. Masters and Yates. They're used to it. Then James and Arnold still picked up four apiece. Here are two guys that we both expected to do well. One did better than the other throughout the series. Tucker Allen 
Comes in, he's going to finish second tonight with a 4-8. Would that 2,000 be enough to get Tucker onto a semifinal? We're about to find out, but Jesse Brown was a machine all three nights. Slows this one in 4.6. So Brown wins the round with Allen in tow. Anderson and Milan also in the money. But Brown will win Super Series 2 in the steer wrestling. Bridger Anderson a close second. And, yes, Tucker Allen had enough, and they're taking Stephen Culling with them. All right, for the ladies in the barrel racing, the first two of their events, <clears throat> you are watching four-time the world champion Haley Kinzel, 1458 on the Yellow Mare sister. And if you don't think the barrel racing is close, 1456. That's two one hundredths of a second that separated Shelly Morgan from Haley Kinzel for the win in round three. Morgan Kinzel, Darling and Smallio, all those people had not placed a lot in the previous rounds. Actually, it was McReynolds that had the best one, 5,500. Shelly Morgan moves in the number two spot with Taryn Lee following her. Now to the breakaway roping. Amanda Coleman with a 3.1. She was the second gunner to go, and we wondered if anybody would beat it. Well, we're going to beat it by four, one, oh, four tenths of a second. Tacey K. Webb, 2.7. That puts her at the top for the 3,000. Amanda still wins second for two, but on the big money. And she is a guitar picking fool, as Katie Williams from Weatherford. <laughs> yes, she can. Amber Crawford's just a thousand dollars behind her. Cheyenne Gilroy, she won uh, Fort Worth, so she stays in the hunt here for a Houston uh, title. And Amanda Coleman rounds out the top four. I think for me, the biggest surprise was probably the barrel racing. Uh, we certainly didn't dominate with Haley Kinzel, and Lisa Lockhart didn't advance. Shelly Morgan, who won the NFR, did, but there were a couple of young stars that you talk about. That Taryn Lee, I think we need to keep our eyes on her. Well, you've got all, they're all uh, my North Texas girls, as I'd say, with Amanda Crawford at, at the bottom. The two nurses tonight, that's a big deal. And uh, those talents are not just lucky, they're here to stay. And amen. As is Cole Reiner. This guy won our Super Shootout last year, and he nearly swept his Super Series this year. When we come back, Patty Smith has the aforementioned Cole Reiner. Stay with us. That he's good. National Finals fucking horse called Control Freak. They won the 50000 on this horse before. Welcome back to Rodeo Wrap. Joining me now, Cole Reimer, the winner of the Bareback Super Series. Um, you're going for the sweep. You didn't get the sweep, but you got the guitar, and I know that made you pretty happy. Yeah, absolutely. Um, my best friend, Leighton Berry, he won the third round and made it back, so I'm not upset about that at all. But I was going for the sweep, and uh, I, I was close, and, and I'll take the money for sure. It's going to count big towards this year's world standings. Um, last year, Jess Pope won this rodeo and won the world, so... I'm going to try to, to one-up them and, and do the same thing, but a little bit better, so it is good. I think it's kind of cool, and people probably don't realize, like, you know, you call it your best friend won it. You guys pull for each other. You travel together. This is, like, really a small, close-knit group of guys, and even though you're in competition with each other, you support each other, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. I travel with uh, Casey Field and Tillon Hooper, and uh, you couldn't find two nicer guys, and you couldn't find two, two guys that talk more smack to each other, and, and you know, we're, we're joking with each other, but... When we're in the arena, it's 100% behind, got each other's back and, and do anything for, for one another. So um, the, the rough stock and especially the bareback riding is a very close-knit community. There's, there's not a lot of us, and, and this is a tough sport. You know, um, you could be on top one day and out the next. So uh, uh, to have good friends and have a support system is crucial in this, in this event. Well, we're going to see you back here in the semifinals, hopefully looking to take home your first $50,000 check. So good luck to you the rest of the week. Thank you very much. So you got to take a quick time out, but don't go anywhere. When we come back, Boyd and I will wrap it all up. Stay with us. And welcome back to Rodeo Wrap. Joining me now, Boyd Polhamus, as promised. And boy, listening to that, you know, to, <laughs> to hear these guys pulling for each other, you know, Leighton Barry being being his best friend, that, that's some pretty cool yeah, stuff. Yeah, and again, they don't compete against each other. They compete against the horse. And so they're always happy when their traveling partner does well. Well, let's talk about the ladies a little bit. Um, you know, this year, the first that every single night we're seeing the breakaway, this is really fast becoming a fan favorite. Oh, absolutely. And, and you can see why. I mean, talented cowgirls that have to rope calves really fast. They got great horse flesh underneath them. It's a fast moving event. And, um, and Katie Williams and uh, Cheyenne Guillory, they take advantage of wins like they're getting here at Houston that they would never had a chance to do before. Yeah, it's really fun to see. And, you know, while we're talking about the ladies, you've got to give me a ruling on what happened <laughs> in the barrel racing with, I believe it was Michelle Darling and her barrel. And I don't know if Graymore, our producer, can show this video, but that barrel 
balanced like I've never seen before. Right, right on the edge. It didn't fall. You can touch them. You can't tip them. If they fall on their side, that's a five-second penalty. So she hits that third barrel. She's running for home, and that barrel is sitting just like this, stuck in the sand. It's like my golf ball on the right. edge of the lip. Right, and right, right. Like <laughs> and you're jumping up and down. <laughs> but if that barrel falls before she crosses the timeline, then she gets the five-second penalty. If she finishes the run with that barrel not hitting its side, she's clean as she was tonight. Yeah, it was amazing. And they came out and, like, tried to – they as <laughs> soon know. as they could, and I'm like, hurry up, hurry up. And then I thought, no, it's uh, probably when the timing is over. Yeah, that so. was, it was really good to watch you. But Andy Sadler, who was calling at the time, but Andy's a pup. He's like, I've never seen anything like that before in my life. And I looked at Bob, and he's got a few years on both me and Andy, and he'd never seen anything like that before in yeah, his life. Yeah, pretty cool stuff. All right, that's going to do it for tonight's show. Be sure to be with us out here at Rodeo Houston each and every night. And if you can't, catch it right here on Valley Sports Southwest. We leave you now with a look at some mutton busting. Hang on, Trip and Trip making it all the way across. Give it up for Trip. From Sleek City, Texas, six-year-old Amelia. Amelia all the way across, and she's turning around and coming back for more.